Hello YouTube, B3 here yet again with another kicking graphic novel <laughs> review. Yeah, we got our boy Matty Matt here. Today we said we were going to give you Power of the Gods, the Justice League one-shot collection. We that, lie! Yeah, that's not happening. You're probably, happening. About, you're probably going to have to wait a little while for that one, actually. <laughs> Sorry. Well, y'all should see this room. It's just covered in graphic novels right Stack, now. stack. Stack, stack, stack. No, stack. get five stacks, <laughs> six stacks going right now with graphic novels. It's that insane. I get through. Yeah, it's insane. It's it's literally so many books. Knocking butts. <laughs> and we're just trying to take a Justice League break. Is what we're doing. We did so much Justice League. Yeah, we did do a lot of Justice League. That's almost entirely what we've done. <laughs> I'm gonna compensate with a lot of Aquaman and Green Arrow in the near future. Yeah, yeah. We're... So yeah, we'll have Rebirth Green Arrow soon, Aquaman Rebirth soon, and. Hellblazer. Yes. Too. Yeah, that's Love very cool. <laughs> so yeah, but today we're going to talk about Superman, Lois, and Clark: Road to Rebirth, which was a mini series in New Fifty Two that brought this Superman back into main continuity. Uh, I told you this in take one. But, but, oh, that uh, take one. In take one, but the, uh, uh, that Superman and. They came back into the picture in Convergence, two-issue miniseries. There were a bunch of different two-issue series in that event. The cities fighting each other. Mm -hmm. They had to fight the Flashpoint universe. Right. And John, first appearance of John, is in the Batcave, Flashpoint Batcave, where Lois gives birth. Gotcha. Not the best place to give birth, honestly. Yeah. Although now literally everything has probably happened to that Batcave. <laughs> that Batcave doesn't exist anymore as oh, really? of the third part of the button. Which was Batman issue 22, I think, of Rebirth. Okay. Yeah. That's There's, an impressive encyclopedia like, yeah. knowledge uh -huh. of that. Someone was keeping uh, the Flashpoint universe alive for some reason in like a pocket universe. Mm -hmm. Probably Dr. Manhattan hasn't been revealed at the time of recording. Blame Dr. Manhattan. Wait. Yeah, just blame Dr. Manhattan. I mean, I can't actually. think of another Watchmen character powerful enough to do that, so. Fair. <laughs> Alright. So you want to dive into this since I read it like now 40 minutes ago now? Yeah, something like that. Just All right. hit me up. So, um, this starts off following, like you said, uh, Lois and Clark from the original, I guess, Gold Bronze Age, you said? I have no Maybe? idea, man. Uh, technically, no. I don't know when that Superman first popped up, but he's the Superman from the modern age of comics, which we're still technically in. Yeah. But, well, most people just call it the pre-New 52 continuity, because I don't know if it has an official name. Okay, so... Because it just lasted so long. <laughs> Alright, fair. Hmm. Excuse me. So, pre-New 52, uh, Superman and Lois escape the destruction of their universe and slip into this parallel one. And they are basically hiding out, trying not to conflict with the existing timeline. Um, trying not to interfere with the Superman and the Lois in this universe. So they've hidden out, and Superman is, of course, incapable of not helping people, but he's been doing it on the DL. Um, in all black and silver, which is a really good look for him. He grew the beard in, and uh, as you guys can probably tell, I'm a fan of that. Yeah, he's very Reign of Superman looking, except instead of the hair being back here, it's up it's here. here. <laughs> Much improved. Uh, Much classier. I don't think anyone liked Mullet Superman. No, there's no winning there. No one, no one, liked, uh, no one liked Mullet Superman, for sure. But, um... Let's hope we don't have to take three. So, um, <laughs> anyways, starting from there... Um, we get to kind of see how they've handled and adjusted to life on the DL. And Superman is taking care of, or uh, I should say, pretty new 52 Superman, just to keep from confusing everybody, has kept some other, you know, supervillains from destroying things, and he's captured a couple of them along the way and stuck them in his own personal Fortress of Solitude that it doesn't really... It's in a mountainside like the original Fortress of Solitude which he has was to move before it was even called the Fortress of Solitude. That's a comic book fact for you. Yeah, the mountain fortress first. Ah, okay. Or an Arctic Fortress, yeah. I kind of like the Arctic one, honestly. It's kind of cool. Me too, man. It's really cool. But anyways, it's Tony and Crystals and stuff. Right? It's very cool. So, anyways, he's got to remove the boulder to get in and all that. And he had to build it, apparently, by hand, remembering what he could from the Kryptonian technology. Also very cool. Very impressive. Very impressive. <laughs> very impressive. Lois had no idea that was there. Yeah. Um, and the basic plot line follows, um... Basic, uh, following a henshaw. Yeah, he tries to stop Hank Henshaw because he thinks he's going to become the cyborg Superman. Who Even was though this universe already has a cyborg Superman, uh, he's from the Supergirl title, so I don't ah. know his origin. Okay. But I think Brainiac made him. 
Okay. I think. I think. So he was trying to avoid his the what occurred in his own universe, which was Henshaw coming back from a trip to Jupiter, and being the cyborg Superman and trying to replace him and kill him. Basically, that's what's referenced in this. Anyways. Yeah, he also hated him because he blamed Superman for the death of his family. It's kind of like a Fantastic Four ripoff thing. Actually, it was more like I don't know. It might have been. Pointing, making a point about Fantastic Four. I don't know. I didn't read that story. Fair <laughs> enough. So, but this Henshaw actually doesn't seem to be a bad dude. In fact, he helps stop one of the villains that escapes from Superman's Fortress of Solitude. He's hiding something, though. Like, for sure he's hiding oh, something. Oh, yeah. Like, we know he was hiding that gem. Right, and he used to be about that, But he's crud. still hiding something, because we don't know what happened to the rest of the crew. Right. Um, this is also kind of when we first get the hint that John has powers. Yes. Where um, Lois, under the pseudonym Author X, which is super cheesy, is um, is still writing and is trying to bring out Inner Gang by publishing a novel and uh, and helping the authorities. Well, Inner Gang's not actually a big fan of that cool figure. So they track Lois back home, not knowing her name or her identity or anything, just through her publisher. And Mannheim's going to steamroll her. Yeah. Mannheim steamroll her. Something like that. Man, I'm a steamroller. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah, no, they're going to burn her to death, actually. Yeah, they try to let her, <laughs> they literally try to burn her and John to death. And, like, John starts to figure, th he's been figuring things out slowly about his identity, and finally he's just so angry that he manages to just snap his bonds like they're, you know, strain, and proceed to just calmly walk through the fires. Yeah, it opens the handle with the burning knob. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, the, I think first, though, the first hint is like when the goons attack them on the road and John just manages to casually bring somebody down with a crowbar. It happens off screen. Yeah. And there's another part where there's like an extreme close up of his ear while mm -hmm. Lois and Clark are talking Superman stuff. Right. But implying he can hear them yeah. from the other part of the house. You know, I was wasn't sure if they were implying that or if they were just trying to do the dramatic cutaway to what they're talking about while they voice over it was an extreme close up of an ear so fair I think... <laughs> you're right I... also what's that villain's name Blanc what's his name Blanc or something like that the, the white dude yeah the, it's Blanc the <laughs> A-L-A-N-Q-U-E however you pronounce I that that's, I think that's Blank or Blanc or something like that yeah I want to say Blank Fair. I think it's sure. blank. But it's B-A-L-A-N-K. It's got a weird spelling. Yeah, but I think, it's, I think it's pronounced blank. blank. Fair. So Blank's thing is just he likes destruction. He's TK is all get out. With his telepathic abilities, though, he could go you know, mind to mind with the Martian Manhunter. Like, he's, he's terrifying. Strong. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and he uses that to manipulate Hemshaw for a little bit, and then Hemshaw zaps him and takes him down and lock him back up. And It was very much a... A small little piece of action to kind of cover up the other action that's going on around it. Um, He's free at the time of recording this. At the time of recording this, General Zod is leading a group of like Mongol, Metallo, Blanc, Cyborg Superman, all of like Superman's that's strongest terrifying. foes. Like a whole group of them just against Superman. <laughs> right now. Boogie. So, anyways, um, Superman's powers are also a little on the fritz right now. They're kind of fading in and out. Yeah, I think that's kind of an old age thing. Like, is it an old age thing? I think it is. Because he's not as strong as he used to be, but he still has the same amount. Is this the like Superman who did the whole Superman Prime thing? Because oh, he's pretty new 52. Are you talking about Superboy Prime? That crazy moment? Or no, no, or no um... <laughs> Superboy Prime's a psychopath. No, I'm talking <laughs> about totally... the Superman who flies into the sun for, like, eons and comes back oh, glowing and golden. Uh, that's Superman 1 million. Okay, sorry. Yeah, that Superman's just a god. Yeah. But yeah. isn't this, that's pre-New 52. That's, that's, uh, that's alternate future. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. I, I'm it's just, all confusing, dude. Comics. I was assuming they, just... they reference in passing that there are multiple superheroes losing their powers because of some comic thing that happened. Oh, that was with Vandal Savage. And I'm wondering Savage if that's, Dawn. I'm wondering yeah. if that's occurring, if it's any after effects of. It might have been, because I don't. Because they, they, they imply that a little bit. You know what? I think it might have been that, actually. I think you're right. Because Sorry, this was happening. <laughs> I deserve that. Because this, I think, was happening when Superman New 52 lost most of his powers. Okay. Because they're worried about their staying hidden since right. his identity was revealed. Well, um, 
really, that's... Um, they run into uh, Hyanthus, who's a crazy lady from Jupiter looking for the crystal thing. They She's give tough. power. She's tough. She goes mano a mano, and her sword is capable of cutting Superman. She can control plants and do all kinds of craziness. Yeah, which was, you know, she gave him actually a little bit of a struggle there. But mostly, this whole plot is to set up what's going on in the background for the next issue, really, and the fact that for Indy 52, Superman's bouncing around and his son is kind of going through the same stuff that Superman did when he was a kid. The identity crisis and who am I and parents are lying to me about where I came from. Yeah, this is easily the, uh, this is my favorite Superboy, for sure. I like him a lot. He's the most relatable so far to me. And he's, uh, he's like, good. I don't, I hate kids. Like, I hate them. I mean, <laughs> and I, I like reading about John, which is... <laughs> like a stretch for you. I hate kids, dude. I know you do. They're kids, bad. if you're watching, I'm sorry. They're bad, dude. He's saying you're bad. Kids shouldn't watch my videos anyways. That's not <laughs> inaccurate. Kids, I apologize for my language. Um, but really, that's kind of the big, you know, plot line. It's pretty simple and yeah. straightforward. I think it's pretty covered. Just um, bringing them back, making sure everyone's got... What's going on? I didn't think this series would be as important as it became. Fair enough. I thought it was just going to be like a side thing going on. Well, and I remember when it came out, I was like, oh, this is cool. And then I was like, well, they're just going to straight up replace Superman, which I was also super excited about. Because <laughs> you didn't like New 52 Superman. I did not like him. But um, I got to say, I really dig Superman with a beard. I he love, Super good. He does I love look Superman good. with a beard back when we were watching Justice League as kids and he gets marooned on that. Future, Future Earth, yeah, with Vandal Savage, like I've always dug Superman with a beard, and now it was ca it's canon right here. That's an underrated arc in that show. It is. It's very underrated. Very arc underrated. In that, show. that was one of my favorite arcs. It's ever. really good, dude. Vandal Savage is just fascinating in that whole. Thing. Yeah, and that whole death of Superman thing for the whole first episode, was, ooh, Ugh. like you knew it was coming back, but at the same time, uh, you really felt. So. As a kid, I didn't know though. Oh well, I didn't see that episode as a kid. I, I only saw it as an adult, and I think I think I was more upset for the other characters than I was for Superman. That was because I most, knew he was coming back. That was definitely the most upsetting part was seeing them all kind of deal with it, and especially Batman. Oh my God, Batman! Batman and Superman are so tight. <laughs> yeah, we should. We'll no, talk about that in the next one. one. But yeah, uh, so yeah, next time we're gonna move on to like the very next story you should read for this Superman, which would be another Road to Rebirth. Ooh, the final days of Superman, which was a big crossover event. I actually have some of the issues that are in here. I have all the Batman Superman ones. But yeah, Batman Superman, Superman, Action Comics, Superman Wonder Woman. It's pretty good. Yes. I didn't think we'll so. Talk, we'll talk about it next time. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it next the, time. Uh, right. So overall impression, though? Yeah, I like, I like it a lot. I like it a I lot, too. too. It's and got when, the best characterization yeah. of Superman I've run into. And when they actually become Superman and Superboy, it's even better. Awesome. Perfect. All right. All right. We'll talk about them more later. Thank you all so much, and we'll see you all Boop. another time of ourselves.